So it is time then for the press preview, a first look at what is on tomorrow's front pages. So much to discuss tonight with Steve Richards, columnist and broadcaster, and Christopher Hope, Associate Editor for Politics at The Daily Telegraph. They'll be with us from now until just before midnight. A very good evening to both of you. So let's have a look at some of those front pages. And they don't make uh, particularly happy reading. Hunt paves way for years of pain is a headline on the front of the FT following the Chancellor's autumn statement. The Metro writes that the budget delivers the biggest plunge in living standards and highest tax burden since World War II. The UK's lost decade is the headline on the eye, reporting that British earnings are being sent back to 2013. From bad to worse is The Guardian's take on the announcement made by the Chancellor. While well, The Telegraph writes that Britain's welfare bill is to rise by almost £90 billion after Jeremy Hunt protects benefit claimants and pensioners from soaring inflation. Staying with the autumn statement, the Daily Mail says middle earners and strivers were hammered with a stealth tax squeeze. Years of tax pain ahead leads the Times. Meanwhile, victory is the headline on Express, the paper leading on the Chancellor's commitment to maintain the triple lock on pensions and the sun splashes on a story about comedians David Baddiel and Frank Skinner unveiling their new Christmas version of Three Lions ahead of the World Cup. Don't forget, you can scan the QR code uh, that you see on screen during the programme. Check out the front pages of tomorrow's papers uh, while you watch us discussing them. And uh, once again, uh, I'm joined by Steve Richards and Christopher Hope. Uh, really great to see you both. Um, and what an evening of front pages, uh, Steve. We were talking uh, in the break. You've covered uh, plenty of uh, budgets, plenty of statements like this, but I don't think uh, we've ever seen so many miserable front pages, have we? No, this is uh, the worst set of front pages I've ever seen following budget stroke autumn statements. And there have been quite a few brutal, gloomy budgets in their time, you know, the early 80s, some of those, the 2010 Osborne austerity package and so on. Um, but quite a few of those were greeted by positive headlines the next day by papers who sort of understood what these various chances were trying to do. Um, this, with the exception of the Express, as you've just highlighted, uh, is, is, is unequivocally gloomy and negative. And as I think uh, Chris and I were both saying we can't remember a set of front pages quite like this following a budget. Yeah, perhaps, Steve, you have to delve a bit, uh, a bit further inside the papers. I see on the front of the FT, Martin Wolfe uh, is writing, sanity has been restored after the insanity of Kwarteng's mini-budget. Um, and you have to say, the markets weren't ruffled, Steve, were they today? So they at least um, are seeing a, a glimmer of hope. Yeah, and let's also contextualise it in a different way. After the quasi Kwarteng mini budget there were quite a few positive front pages i remember the daily mail at last a tory budget and so on so it doesn't necessarily mean um that it will be as bad as these front pages suggest in the same way ken clark used to say when he was chancellor a, a budget that receives good press one day starts unraveling a day later however uh, this is at the end of a long period of conservative rule it's one of the reasons why i think they are so negative when you're uh, announcing such a range of bad news. And I think it's quite ominous for this um, long-serving governing party, these headlines. Yeah, and uh, uh, it's a particularly grim headline on the front of the Metro. You've never had it so bad. I mean, Chris, uh, what an eight weeks it's been, going from trussonomics to this. Yeah, well, I think it's seven weeks to separate the... Um the statement for growth from Kwasi Kwarteng and this and this uh, extraordinary um, mini budget. If you take to take one measure from it, the 45p tax rate that was abolished seven weeks ago, and this, it's been strengthened and made a lot worse and caught a lot more people in this Jeremy Hunt mini budget announced today. It is extraordinary. It's bewildering. Um, it's confusing. It's difficult to comprehend. Tory MPs are upset about the language from Jeremy Hunt today. They think that the language that he used um, is the language of Labour. There was um, very little difference for some Tory MPs between what Gordon Brown got up to when he was uh, Chancellor and what Jeremy Hunt's done. The language also, the language to describe um, unearned wealth, this, this language which is used for, for dividends, uh, for shares, which have been paid for out of people's earnings in many cases and saved for, um, it's been described in ways which... Tory MPs tell me they don't think a Conservative Chancellor should use those terms. Um, 
there's a there's a real problem here. I mean, he, I, I say I was chuckling really in a black humour way to what Steve was saying about Ken Clark's remark about budgets unravel the following day. Well, I mean, if this one unravels any further, there'll be nothing left. There'll be a piece of spring. <laughs> well, Chris, it was funny. You, I, I read your, your 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 column in in the Telegraph this morning, um, and you were saying vote Labour if you want to cut your income tax. Um, uh, yes. And, uh, and uh, Labour saying uh, today, you know, this 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 is. The price of 12 yeah. years of, of economic mismanagement. Well, I, I said that because I was, I was, I've been struck by the past seven weeks since um, Jeremy Hunt reversed Kwasi Kwarteng's cut in the base rate, the 20p to 19p in income tax. Uh, that was reversed to 20p for the Tory party. And But Labour have still have their cut in place, 20p to 19p. So vote, if you want your tax cut, vote Labour. Was, and that showed, to me, showed what a topsy-turvy world we're living in in politics when... Uh, Labour is the party of tax cutting, not the Tory party. Uh, front of the eye uh, says UK's lost decade and the OBR um, had a particularly grim outlook, uh, Steve, didn't they? Biggest drop in living standards on, on record. Um, household disposable income set to fall 7% over the next two years. I mean, it's going to be really difficult for people. Yeah, it is. And you see, again, I think the context is so important. You see that lost decade. When I saw the headline, I wasn't sure whether it was referring to the last 10 years or the next 10 years, because it's been tough for the last 10 years. And in a way, the problem uh, Jeremy Hunt and uh, Rishi Sunak have got is the only way you keep momentum going when you've been in power for so long um, is to say, look, we've taken some really tough decisions en route, um, but now we can see a sort of promised land ahead, you know, after all the hard, tough times. But they can't do that. They can only do the opposite. And it, actually, a lot of the pain is postponed until 2024 onwards after the general election in terms of spending cuts, if, if they were ever to be imposed. And of course, on one level, that is a dream for Labour because they can say, look, this follows 12 years of Tory government. It doesn't follow a Labour government. But it presents them with dilemmas as well, the degree to which they challenge those spending projections. Uh, famously, Gordon Brown, when Shadow Chancellor accepted all the Tory proposed spending plans post-97. And after that election, the then Chancellor, ex-Chancellor, Kenneth Clutsey, had no intention of keeping to them. They were ridiculously tight. And I suspect that would be the same if the Tories were to get in next time. But will Labour dare to challenge them and face allegations, the opposite of what Chris has just said, hidden taxes and all the rest of it. So it's a dream on one level for Labour, but some dilemmas to resolve. Mm. Front page of the Daily Mail, Chris, echoing what we were discussing uh, a moment ago, Sarah Vine inside saying, and there was me thinking we'd voted in the Conservatives. Wow. Um, uh, the headline there, Tories soak the strivers. Uh, a very predictable yeah, no, headline from the Daily Mail, don't you think? I mean, it is middle, mi middle earners who, who, who are going to really struggle. We're getting stuck into the real problem here for the Tory party. Uh, th this uh, front page and my own newspaper, The Telegraph, are absolutely brutal. These are meant to be the party, the, the, the papers that support the Conservative yeah. Party. There we have Sarah Vine, of course, the ex-wife of Michael Gove, saying, and there was me thinking we'd voted in the Conservatives. And there, those bullet points there, tax is sort, sort of the highest since war, the war, middle class funded in fund welfare and pensions, Tories soak the strivers. I mean, this is exactly what the Tory party should stand for, but it's the, it's the complete opposite of what's happening. And when the Daily Mail turn on you, it is really difficult to come back from this. Um, we'll come to the Conservatives shortly. There's a picture there of a very wet Jeremy Hunt jogging this morning with his dog somewhere where he lives in, in central London. Um, you know, he's a very he's a nice guy, a, a, a decent man, Jeremy Hunt. He was sold a curveball, a difficult... Um, uh, you know, difficult case to answer really once Kwasi Kwarteng had done his bit. Um, we are at the end, of course, of this huge amount of money being spent on COVID-19, um, the war in Ukraine, Russia's invasion, the energy shock. It's a bit of a nightmare for anyone in power, um, but the Tories are being blamed for it, and that can only benefit Labour. Yeah, Steve, I mean, how, how do you think this is going to down, go down with the public? We've talked a lot about how backbenchers are going to see it, how business is going to see it, but how do you think the public are going to take it on board. Do you think there's an acceptance that furlough has to be paid for, COVID costs the country a huge amount of money, Russia is uh, a, a problem that's out of the government's hands, um, uh, uh, they've got to clear up the mess after, after the Kwarteng statement. Do you, do you think there is some sympathy for Jeremy Hunt and, and for what he's done today amongst the public? 
No. Um, that, uh, by this point, I think voters begin to lose whatever patience they have um, because, you know, remember, we've, we've talked about it. We've already had the sort of quasi quatang period, which is this is an attempt to partly overcome. So it's quite hard for voters to say, oh, yeah, I, I kind of completely up with what the Conservatives are doing when this is, as I say, an attempt to redress that. Um, and there are also issues to the other context, as well as this being a long-serving government, is that Britain is doing worse on many measurements uh, compared with their European equivalents, um, uh, including in terms of growth. Britain's in recession now. Now, why is that? What is distinct? Um, now, in my view, one of the issues is Brexit. It's a sort of taboo theme, but I think it is beginning to surface. Not necessarily Brexit, but the version of Brexit negotiated by Lord Frosty Frost, as Boris Johnson used to call him. Um, but there are others. And so I think it's quite hard. They'll try and do it and say, look, this is about Ukraine, the pandemic, and all the other things that have gone on. It's an international challenge. Partly it's but not wholly. And I think voters have lost patience. Chris, would you agree with that? Well, I would say, you know, in defence of Jeremy Hunt, he did make clear to MPs today how inflation is higher in economies on the, on the continent. Germany is one I think he mentioned. Um, yeah, I think there's, it's, it is difficult to see where they come back from. I mean, Brexiteers um, do tell me that the problem with Brexit not working is it's not really understood or taken advantage of by... Um, by by the blob, as they describe it, civil servants don't want to re really push the boat out and and grasp your, the opportunity given to them by the people in, in 2016. I mean, I think we can't really relitigate Brexit again, but I, I think that that's part of the criticism from the from the right of how Brexit has been implemented. And, and finally, Steve, the quandary, I suppose, now for the government is, is, is how do you go for growth when inflation is, uh, is soaring? I mean, did you see anything in there that, that sort of pointed towards uh, uh, trying to grow the economy? As you say, we're, 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 we're lagging right at the end of the G7 countries. Yeah, well, <clears throat> there were a few things, but they were relatively minor. And when, when you are imposing such constraints on public spending taking money out of the economy with tax rises. Uh, growth is a kind of fairly distant prospect. And so I don't think there was much. It was such a contrast to the Kwarteng statement. It was. Growth, 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 tax cuts. I mean, there's not... I think this was managing a crisis and perhaps making it worse. OK, uh, thanks for the moment. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, coming up after that, more of the press preview, including this story from The Telegraph, the rhetoric of Osborne with the policies of Brown. Don't go Welcome back to the press preview. Uh, Christopher and Steve are still with me. Front of the Daily Telegraph, uh, Chris, I'll let you do this as it's your paper. Um, they, uh, their headline is a quote, and I, I can't actually find out who, who it's from. You might know, the rhetoric of Osborne with the policies of Brown. Yeah, it's a quote from the Resolution Foundation, which often provides very good analysis of, of budgets and autumn statements. And, and it, it sort of summarises, I think, the way that, that there's two things at play here. I mean, uh, there's, there's a kind of... Um, Osborne <laughs> trap maybe for Labour, as Steve alluded to a little earlier, when he talked about how the, the fact that the, the Labour will have choices to make at the next election, whether to carry on with these uh, the spending cuts planned by the Tories if they win, or indeed not to do that, and how will they pay for them? Um, but the, I think they've, 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 they've zeroed in on, on part of the problem at the heart of this statement is, is the way that the government is protecting um, the welfare bill is up by £90 billion as Hunt protects pensioners on the, on the state pension against inflation. And then clobbers, which is not a word we often use on the front page of Telegraph, clobbers workers uh, with, with, with tax rises. And that seems to be the problem. You go back to the, the last front page we looked at, uh, da daily, the Daily Mail and the strivers being hit. There's a problem here that it seems that work isn't paying. Uh, and that is really, that's why I think people think, well, why is this a Tory government? Why are they doing this? Um, the, the, it's a hard choice for Jeremy Hunt. He's trying to protect people who can't afford, who can't get work or can't afford to work uh, and, the, and the rest of it. But it is a problem here because it's not rewarding the right people for the Conservative Party.
Yeah. Um, Steve, it, I mean, it wasn't all bad news today, was it? Uh, uh, more money for schools, more money for the NHS, more money for social care to get people through these, these tough times. And as the Daily Express uh, highlights, mm. uh, the triple lock as well, good, good news for pensioners. Yes, although it's interesting, so far in our uh, review of the front pages, we focused on the tax rises. I think really of greater concern, or what should be of greater concern to uh, voters in the country, is the uh, public spending plans. Um, now, I know he didn't, Jeremy Hunt, put it all on, or most of it, on public spending cuts, as George Osborne did in 2010. He did more on tax rises, certainly in the short term. But these spending projections, even for the NHS and education, which did get more than most people thought it would, um, is still relatively low compared with the demand. Um, the NHS in particular, I still think, is going to be a big story. The demand, the waiting lists, um, even with this sort of ring-fenced funding. So there is an issue, to be honest, um, as to whether they are planning to spend enough, and certainly post-2024, 2025. I mean, they will hope that the economy, if they are still there, the economy is improving and they won't have to do some of the spending constraints. But they are really tough. So that's the other side of the this particular rather bleak equation. Yeah, OK, it is It is a bleak equation. So let's uh, finish on some good news. It's coming home, Chris, front of the sun. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the song which I remember, I was, uh, my goodness sake, that it must be nearly 30 years ago when his first song, song was first in the charts, um, uh, is coming home, uh, Bedeal and Skinner, of course. It's now got some Christmas worth because we have got a Christmas World Cup. And uh, um, the, the top right there, the sun next to the masthead, tax hell, thank God for footy. Well, Alan Lee, you to that. <laughs> Absolutely right. Um, and the front of the Telegraph has a map cartoon, uh, which I just want to bring up as well, because it sort of combines in, 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 in the only way that Matt can, the autumn statement with the football. Uh, there's a couple watching the autumn statement on TV, and uh, Matt says, look on the bright side, all the bad news will prepare you for the bitter disappointment <laughs> of the World Cup. I mean, let's hope not. Steve, <laughs> come on. <clears throat> yeah, but we, I think, partly enjoy being miserable over the World Cup, I mean, not the economy. <laughs> How do you think? We can drown, our, drown, drown our sorrows in the run-up to Christmas. All right, thank yeah, you both very yeah. much. Uh, we'll speak again. Steve and Chris are staying with us for the next hour to discuss tonight's news and tomorrow's headlines. Right now, let's take a look at the weather.